Hi, I'm Jason Walker. This is Walker Tea Review, where we are bringing the delights of the online tea world. Today we're going to be starting out with Seven Cups Longjing Tea. So we're going to get this one in the cup, get it going, so that we can talk about uh, what it has to offer. I'm going to load this up. I'm getting, that was a little less than a teaspoon, so I'm going to toss in a little bit more. I'm going to put some out here as well. Longjing is one of the more famous teas and more uh, recognizable teas that, that you have of Chinese teas that's out there and available. Let's give these guys a rinse so that we can kind of get some of the dust off, warm up the leaves, get everything ready to go. There we are. A few more drops. There we go. Okay. So then we'll get these ready to steep. Get a few of those off the side there. We'll set that over so that we can talk and let that uh, steep as we do. As we said, this is seven cups. Longjing, we're not going to uh, zoom in very much. A little bit of information that we have here from this package, which is a sample. Uh, this is a 2008. Uh, this comes, Longjing traditionally comes from the area of Hangzhou, which is outside of Shanghai. Uh, let's see, we have for a 12 ounce pot, steeping recommendations are a three quarter tablespoon of tea. 180 degrees Fahrenheit water, and that it makes several infusions. Uh, this particular one, we'll have to check on prices because this is a 2008. But as, as we do that, we want to also take a moment, give it a good smell. I should have done that earlier. Like a lot of your uh, Chinese green teas, this one does have a kind of a kind of a sweet uh, clover slash spinach uh, aroma to it, uh, which is quite pleasant. But what I want, really want to look at is more of our leaves. So let's go ahead and look a little more closely and zoom in here on our, on what we, on our dry leaves. Dry leaves are interesting in that the way they are character, characteristically shaped for Longjing tea. Longjing is Dragon Well, talking about uh, the location of origin near the Dragon Well in uh, there outside of Hangzhou, the and the lake area there. Uh, these leaves are pressed flat. Okay, you've got a nice kind of a emerald light green here. We've got uh, leaves that have been pressed down in the pan as they've been as they've been uh, treated, as they've been uh, fired, or fixed, I should say, rather. Now, one thing I want to notice, again, here your size, about uh, three quarters of our paper clip, and our paper clip is uh, about an inch and a quarter, so you're getting close to an inch there for a lot of these pieces. Now, as we zoom out, one thing I do want to talk about is I would interact with tea sellers uh, and uh, tea producers in China, actually, who would give samples of the leaves and allow you to taste the dry leaf. A characteristic of a lot of, um, a lot of Long Jing's is it gives a kind of, um, a lot of people associate it in China with a, a, a rice taste, a, a ricey type grain element to it. But, um, so we're going to look at and yeah, you can get a lot of, uh, of aroma and a sense of the tea just from the dry leaf. What we're going to do now, I think we've had enough time. Yeah, we've got some color there. Our leaves have uh, relaxed and opened up and taken, taken a more natural shape than what they have here. So we're ready to go ahead and start to pour. Yeah, now let that cool for just a minute. And what I want to do is also talk about our 
color of our of our tea there. So I'm going to get these dry leaves out of the way. If you ever have the opportunity, um, actually Seven Cups offers tea tours. Hangzhou is an excellent place to be in the springtime when the things around their lake area are in full bloom, lots of color. Um, it's also a Seven Cups offers a tea tour when they are harvesting. It's a good time to be there during harvest time as well. But what we have in front of us today is a kind of a pale yellow color, fairly transparent. Um, this is fairly typical of a of a Longjing or Longqing as you may see in Longqing on some pronunciations if it's non-Mandarin. Uh, I have seen richer color, but again that could come from that could come from your steep time, which uh, if you prefer to steep longer and draw out more of the, the aromas and flavors. So we have uh, a tea here. Just going to take a look at the leaves. Um, I'm finding that uh, a lot of the green teas, the, the wet leaf aromas, do not distinguish themselves as to bring out something unique or anything to add. Although in past uh, tastings we have talked about the leaves, we're going to forego that this time and just talk more about uh, the aromas from our, of our drink. Yeah. Now, what I'm finding is this one, this particular cup in this tasting and in previous tastings has a blend of what are traditional tastes of, um, I'm finding here some elements of, of bok choy, uh, kind of a green Chinese vegetable. I'm getting a little sense of kind of a, a, a nutty, that toasted element I brought to, I mentioned before, kind of a cashew. Uh, traditional idea has been more of, of, of chestnut, but I, my palate picks up more of a, of a cashew note. Uh, let's see, what else do I want to talk about? Yeah, the, the aftertaste, it is uh, a little bit, it does have a sweeter note to it, almost a kind of refreshing element in the back. Um, the body, um, not as heavy as, or not as... Um, thick and creamy as, say, a Japanese green, but um, it does have a, a tinge of astringency to it, which is what we would expect. This is what is characteristic of, of a Longjing like this. And yes, those, those flavors in that palate do extend throughout the mouth more of a sensation towards the back of the mouth. So, given the characteristics that we have, it is less astringent, although it does have some astringency. Um, it does have some of our characteristic uh, shapes in the dry leaf. It has uh, our color. Again, it, this could have been a brighter color, and again, that could be steep time related. That could be, this is a 2008 harvested tea. So this tea, these leaves are nearly a year old. If we had a, a, a 090, we would expect even stronger, fuller profile. Um, we did not have a ricey type uh, taste, at least in the drink, although in the dry leaf I did detect that. So it does carry a lot of the characteristics of a good quality or higher quality Longjing tea. Therefore, I'm pleased uh, and feel that it's fair to give this a, a 93. It is a, a good quality Longjing tea that's available. I look forward to the 2009 because I think it would even offer a greater taste uh, and quality to it. So, I'm Jason Walker, and we just looked at uh, Seven Cups Longjing Tea.